the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. We gather as God's people, giving thanks to God for the blessings of our faith, of the sacraments, and of our way of life following the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, who leads us always to safety and to nourishment and to the fulfillment of God's will for us to be with him forever. We call to mind our sins and our failings, as we seek in this Eucharist to deepen our relationship with the Good Shepherd, Jesus our Savior, and be those who follow him faithfully. Together we pray, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Let us pray. O God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the Paschal mysteries on earth, bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full measure of your grace for ages unending. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter, and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean you are not to call profane. This happened three times, 
and then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa, and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you, by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as it had upon us at the beginning, and I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles too. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Then will I go in to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the most beautiful images we have of Jesus is as a shepherd, as one who leads his flock. 
And in doing so, in these days, we hear in John's gospel the, the beautiful image of the good shepherd and what it means to Jesus to be that shepherd. Today, we hear about the importance of him gathering those together as one to follow him and how he lays his life down for his sheep, for the flock that he leads and tends and guides and allows that gift and blessing of self-sacrifice to be what we are grateful for, certainly, but also we are called to imitate the characteristics of the Good Shepherd in our care for others. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear the beginning of the controversy of, of how the early church was just gathering those who were uh, Jewish people to become Christians. And there was a question, do we also welcome the Gentiles? And we'll hear this played out through the first reading this week. But it again shows us the care that Peter has in imitating Jesus as a good shepherd to bring all to life in Christ and not to separate or to, uh, to exclude anyone, but to allow anyone who wants that life in Christ to have that life in Christ and to imitate the good shepherd we are grateful uh, as we remember the Good Shepherd of those who lead us during these difficult and challenging days, those who lead us with their humility, those who lead us with their smart, with their, with their very thought-provoking uh, guidelines and recommendations and requirements. I cannot but think of uh, Governor DeWine and Dr. Acton, who we have all come to appreciate and to respect greatly because of their leadership and being very, you could tell they've had lots of discussions and gotten lots of information from people, but they also are very humble in saying there's some things we just don't know, and we have to work together and, and continue the science and the research and the discussions and talking with so many different people so we make good decisions and we follow their uh, requirements and recommendations for the health and safety of all. That's such an important thing. I think that's what, certainly what Jesus, the good shepherd, would want. As, certainly as a shepherd, he wanted his flock to follow him to green pastures, but in safety and in health. And remembering that we are to attract others by our way of life in Christ. And allow the gift and blessing of us being faithful sheep who follow Jesus, the good shepherd, to then imitate his kindness, his care, and his concern for others. We offer our prayers of petition to our Heavenly Father, for our church, for our Holy Father Pope Francis and all church leaders to lead in the spirit of Jesus the Good Shepherd in their care of the sheep they are to lead who follow them. We pray, Lord, Lord, Lord hear our hear prayer. Him. For peace in the world, for leaders of nations, for leaders of states in our country, for those with responsibility to lead in communities and in family, for the members of our military and those who serve on our safety forces, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick or suffering, for those in hospitals, nursing homes, and for those who are homebound, for those who live with mental anguish or anxiety or mental illness at this time. For those who live with fear and worry and doubt. For medical professionals and caregivers, especially for children caring for ill parents. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are poor, hungry, or homeless, for immigrants and refugees, for those who have asked for our prayers and those who have no one to pray for them. On this 50th anniversary of the events at Kent State University, we pray for those who were killed, those who were injured, and those too who are still troubled by what took place there, and we pray for peace. For the prayers of our own hearts this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For Jean Smuts, Karen Olin, Jan Goyette, Mary DeLuca, Mary Wagner, Faith Esker, Margie Tayeski, and Rita Corniello. For all of our beloved deceased sisters and brothers, 
for those who are dying this day and for those who comfort them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and loving God, as you call us into the selfless sacrifice for others, following the example of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, we pray you hear and grant the prayers we have voiced and the prayers of our hearts according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, Jesus took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Heavenly Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, the clergy, and all your holy people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, our patron saints, St. Francis Xavier, and all the saints with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Please offer to each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. 
God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.